I had you worried there for a minute, didn't I? No, the game just has really good music. I always have to listen to it when I play it. And I figured talking through the music would be kind of stupid. Anyways, so yeah, there's going to be commentary throughout the whole thing. Anyways, um, what to do? Well, first off, the, uh, I'm, I've never used this recording equipment before, so I, if there's a problem with the way it's set up, then I'm still learning. Anyways, so we've got the little intro here, introduces our main character, Lan Hikari. And he's getting talked to by somebody, but we don't know who yet. So, they got a little pinky thingy going on there in the corner, and we get Mega Man! Yes, we get two main characters. This is not Mega Man. Mega Man is the computer program inside the PET. Personal terminal. Anyways. So, basically, our game is going to flip-flop between Mega Man acting as mission control in the real world and Lan acting as mission control in the cyber world. Now, PET comes with all sorts of different features. As you can see right now, we're doing email. We, you can get messages from different characters in the game, and sometimes they include items. So, it's usually worth it whenever you get a new email. The other things you can do is see which weapons you have equipped. You get you get new weapons throughout the game, and you can have 30 of them set to Mega Man at any time. And then you, when you're in a battle, you can choose which weapons you want to keep, or which weapons you want to use during the battle. Like the Pokemon games, or almost any game with a collection aspect, you get a library to see how well your collection is going. There is, needless to say, a lot of weapons for you to look for, hunt down, and collect. Every enemy in the game has its own weapon you can claim for your own, and so you want to look for your enemies to get them. This is your basic status screen, not much you can do here for now. Your key items, we don't have any. Network is mainly just the, um, if you want to play against another person who happens to own the game, and save is rather self-explanatory. So, anyways, getting on to the game proper. Lan is a school kid, so needless to say, the first thing we need to do is go to the school. And here we meet our first um, non-player character. Other than Lan's mom, who we may have seen as we walked by. This is Mail. Or M A Y L. It every character in the game seems to have a computer related pun to it. No, Lan, local access network. Mail, like email. Mm. The villains, they're referred to as the WWW on the game, but in the other things, like the manga, they're referred to as World 3, which is a much better sounding name than the WWW. Who names this crap anyways? Anyhow, here we have Lan's school rival, Dex, and this in helps give the concept that you can have your net navies fight each other instead of just viruses. As long as you have a backup, you can, you know, if, you know, if your navy gets deleted, you can always restore it from a backup. So, net battling is almost like a sport, at least in the context of this game. Now, as you can see, the the internet is a major factor of everybody's life to the point where the tu the tutorial for playing the game and the battles and such is actually a school lesson. Of course, what doesn't make sense is given how old the characters are and how much they already seem to know, you know, net battling type stuff. Learning the basics seems rather simplistic even for this setting, but at least there's an explanation for it. Now, 
what bugs me is this first game they call the first virus that you use the, for the tutorial med tool. Later games call them a metar. Well, I wonder which one's the official one for the whole series. Anybody watching this knows. Let me know. I'm not really that sure. Um, so here's the cyber version of the school building, and we begin the tutorial. First virus you're going to meet in the game is a med tool. It a non-elemental navy, has 40 health, and you can earn two different battle chips by defeating it. Uh, those who play the other Mega Man games, you know, the normal ones, know that these guys hide under their hats when you come, you know, when you're a distance away and only peek out to attack you. Later versions of this virus have the same behavior and will hide in their hats to block all of your shots and you can only hit them when they peek out to attack. However, seeing as these are the tutorials, and they're using the Goomba of the Mega Man series, no, most basic enemy, anyways, the weakest versions don't have that ability, which makes this very easy. Now, as you can see, there is a unique battle system in this game that I don't think has ever been used in any other game that isn't a direct fan game of this one. I know there's a Toho version of this, which I haven't played personally, I'm pretty sure it's all in Japanese and I don't know any foreign languages, but anyways. So what you do is you can either, you pick, uh, you pick five weapons to y use for your turn. Your wep the weapons that you choose can either be the same type of weapon, such as here, we're using two cannons, or they have to have the little matching yellow letter in the corner, and if they match, you're allowed to use them, which adds a bit of strategy to building your folders, or your weapon sets. You can, you're restricted to the red area as you, as you battle. The enemies are restricted to the blue, with a couple rare exceptions, and this also means that there are weapons, which we will see later, that can manipulate the playing field. Um, your main weapons will do a bulk of the damage that you will be dealing to your enemies, but when you run out and your turn isn't over, you, as they're saying right now, you have a the little bar up there that you can wait for it to fill up and then you can pick more weapons when it's full. And you have the Mega Buster, Mega Man signature attack, which in this game is pathetically weak. This is the most basic weapon in the game. You're doing 40 damage to an enemy. The Mega Buster will do 1 damage. You do not want to rely on this unless you are determined to show off how good you are at the game and how well you can dodge everything, which by that point seems like it would just be very boring. Anyways, later or actual storyline, well not storyline battles, but actual battles in the game will have the, um, you get ranked depending on how well you do. The quicker you kill the enemy and the less damage you take, the higher your ranking will get. Lowest score is a 1, highest score is an S. Different ranks will get you different prizes. High l ranking battles will get you powerful battle chips or specific chip codes, that the yellow letters, and larger amounts of money if you're given money for finishing the battle. Very poorly done battles will get you usually small amounts of money, and very, very small amounts of money, and occasionally you might get a battle chip in a different battle code. So even if you already have the weapon from the enemy, you might still want to pick a fight with them to try to get different battle chip codes and multiple copies of the same weapon. I believe the limit on how many you're allowed to have of the same weapon in your battle folder. <laughs> your battle folder is 5 unless it's from it's a weapon you receive from a boss which you can only have one. Anyways, as you can see here, we just used a battle chip to manipulate the playing field and allow us to get closer to the enemy. But, because we used up all of our weapons at the moment, we were left with the dinky little Mega Buster. But, we get another shot at using 
these things because it's our next turn and it's the tutorial. So you use steel to get up close and you use the sword to kill it. Very easy. So for the last tutorial, it is basically going over all of what you've already learned, which is pretty much two things. Use the sword for the close-up ones and the cannon for the far away one. You're not required to do this, and we don't have a wide sword, so we can't kill the two in front at the same time, but... Anyways, this also introduces the next concept. If, because your weapons are randomly chosen from your list, you will have occasions where you do not have a, use, a usable weapon or a decent strategy. So if you're willing to go a turn without using any battle chips, you will receive 10 the next turn instead of just 5. If that is still not good enough for you, you can go another turn without weapons, and you will end up with a whopping 15 chips, or half of your entire chip folder. If you cannot build a decent combo for your turn with 15 battle chips, you are doing something very wrong. Then again, if you can't, if you're in a position where you can't come up with some way to attack and you have five battle chips already, you are still doing something wrong. A well-built folder can basically kill everything in a matter of seconds. Basically, if you are taking more than two seconds per battle, again, you are doing something wrong or you just don't have any decent weapons yet. Well, basically, there are people who can really kick ass at this game. You need to look for YouTube videos. It, they're amazing. Anyways, so now we go to the first optional boss of the game. This is Gutsman EXE, an elemental, non-elemental type net navy with 200 health. You can get his weapon um, Gutsman, you can get his, you know, personal chip, a summon, or you can get Guts Punch, which is basically punching one square ahead of you. It's very, very slow, but will do a huge amount of damage. As you can see, this guy here is very slow on his attacks. However, if he does connect, he hits like a truck. However, it still, if you manage to get hit by this guy, again, you are doing something pathetically wrong. All of his weapons, or all of his attacks right now, are ground-based, like the med tools we saw earlier. Meaning his attacks cannot pass missing panels. Which makes this truly stupid when he decides to crack your panels because you can build yourself a little safe spot, hidey hole, like I did just now. Anyways, so you can hide in a corner even for the entire fight and he cannot hurt you in any way. Late, later on, this guy is just going to be a punching bag. However, his weapon does come in handy, seeing as it hits everything on the screen, guaranteed to hit 90% of the time. Unfortunately, we didn't get anything here. So, anyways, we did the tutorial and the first main battle, so let's just save the game and see you next time.